So I'm guessing you've heard by now the World Cup is currently happening for the first time in four years. And in this whole World Cup season, there are too many things are happening related to the World Cup that just aren't soccer. For example, England, Wales, Belgium, Denmark, Germany, the Netherlands, and Switzerland decided prior to the World Cup that the armbands that the captains would wear would be quote-unquote one-love armbands, tying into the whole love is love stupidity. It would have like a heart on it, and it would say one love, and it was very, very creative, I can assure you. First of all, come on, we're soccer players. Sure, we might support different countries, but... We need to stick together to fight this whole soccer is gay mantra. This doesn't exactly help. And FIFA wasn't exactly in support of this whole thing. Those countries were preparing to pay fines that came with the kit violations that were the armbands. In other words, this band wasn't even an allowed statement, which would supposedly show how committedly gay these players are. But FIFA then threatened the two countries with bookings for the players, or yellow cards. Two of those in a game, and the player who was given the cards can't play in the next game. Now, my advice would be to keep wearing them, despite what some may think. It only means better things for the U.S. team, especially because we play the Netherlands on Saturday. So, keep wearing them. Maybe just change course now. But anyway, FIFA ended up compromising, so those captains will now wear no discrimination armbands, which have a heart, but it's like black and white. And it's still very, very creative, I assure you. One last thing. How do those armbands, even if they got to wear the one love ones, have any effect on those who would be considering discrimination. The NFL does the same thing with end racism signs in like the end zone and on helmets, as if a committed racist is going to see that and think, oh, I should change my entire worldview. At least end zones are easier to spot than a small armband on a soccer captain. And is an alleged homophobe going to change their ways just because they saw Harry Kane on Britain wearing a no discrimination armband? First of all, if this is against people in America like the NFL is, well, nobody cares about Britain. And anyway, my whole point here is to say that you should just play the great game of soccer and get on with it. If you're a professional soccer player, you are completely different from some elected official or policymaker who gets to actually declare things about the views of your country that you represent. You, as a professional soccer player, were chosen because of your soccer skill, which I greatly respect. But that doesn't mean you should take your word, or I should take your word on anything outside of the realm of soccer. Nor does it mean that the United States should change how we manage our team based solely on politics. Before I even get to the stupid equal pay policy I'm about to talk about, the men's national team recently gave this statement on Twitter, quote, We wanted to show our support for the women in Iran with our graphic for 24 hours. And they proceeded to post to the Group B standings, Group B being the four teams that U the USA is in for the round robin, with the Iranian flag missing the, the Islamic crest in the middle because that'll surely show them. It was actually reported that the second anyone even connected with the Iranian regime was notified of this devastating news, their faces began to melt off and their entire body exploded. Pretty destructive stuff. No, all that happened was Iran requested the US team be suspended for the next 10 FIFA games. If president shows us anything, we may be in trouble here. And there are times when you should be allowed to speak your mind. They make interviews for that very purpose. The field is not the place for that, though. And to preface what you're about to hear from me, know that most of the players on the USMNT, the men's national team, aren't as liberal as their managers. For example, Tyler Adams quite cleverly danced around a race-baiting reporter. Are you okay to be representing a country that has so much discrimination against black people in its own borders? And uh, we saw the Black Lives Matter movement uh, over the past few years. My apologies on uh, the mispronunciation of your country. Um, yeah, that being said, you know, there's discrimination uh, everywhere you go. Um, you know, one thing that I've learned, especially from living abroad in the past years and uh, having to fit in in different cultures, is that in the U.S. we're, we're continuing to make progress uh, every single day. I grew up in a, in a white family with an obviously an African-American heritage and background as well. So um, I had a little bit of uh, different cultures and I, I was very, very easily able to assimilate in different different cultures. So, um, you know, not everyone has that, that ease and uh, the ability to do that. And obviously it takes longer to understand. And through education, I think it's it's super important. Like you just educated me now on the pronunciation of, of your country. So um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a process. I think as, as long as you see progress, uh, that's the most important thing. So kudos to Tyler Adams and a number of other players who have been kind of outspoken. Christian Pulisic, like his name suggests, is a devout Christian and has been known to post Bible verses on his Instagram account. But this is what angers me most, all of that aside. CNN has this report, and I quote, as a result of the equal pay agreement forged earlier this year between the United States Soccer Federation, the United States Women's National Team Players Association, and hang with me here, these names are extremely long, 
the United States National Soccer Team Players Association, the men and women's teams split all World Cup earnings. So each time a team advances in the World Cup, they earn an exorbitant sum amount of money. The USA's women team literally won its last two World Cups and has $6 million to show for it. And that might sound like a lot, but to put that into perspective, that is over eight years or two World Cups. And all the men's team has done so far is advance beyond the first stage of the World Cup, and we've already won $13 million. Because of these stupid rules, we split that evenly with the women's team, meaning they get $6.5 million, which is already more than they ma managed to make by winning eight years' worth of World Cups, which, again, is just two. Now, I, do I bring this up because I think it's great how equal everything is? No, I bring this up because it is just literally stupid. There's no other way around it. Now, many have been marking this move as pressure on FIFA to put more resources into women's sports. Professional sports complainer Lindsey Gibbs says, quote, They put more pressure on FIFA to invest in the women's game, because now the lack of resources given to the women directly impact the men, too. Solidarity truly does matter. Now, the women's team made $6 million in the last eight years, which is still a pretty good sum of money, and that's only the World Cup, not any other game or league that they play in. FIFA determines how much money is awarded for the World Cup winnings based on money gained from sponsorships, advertisements, ticket sales, and then just online viewers of the World Cup. The Women's World Cup in 2019 was watched by 1.12 billion people from data according to FIFA. That same data shows that the Men's World Cup in 2018, the final was watched by 3.572 billion people, which was literally more than half the world at that point. That means that if advertisers paid equally for the Men's and Women's World Cup for a spot for that same number of seconds or whatever it is, FIFA would earn 320% more on online advertising alone. FIFA certainly charges more, however, for the Men's World Cup because they know that it'll attract more viewers, so the advertisers desire a spot that there is much more than they would at the Women's World Cup. Now, this is really just unfair to the men because they, their league is pulling in more money, so therefore they should win more money when they do well. Women's team, if you want more money, play in a way that's more interesting so people actually want to watch. And overall, all World Cup players are soccer players, wh whatever it is. Stop dragging your stupid social values into it and just play soccer. And yes, it is called soccer, not football. That's with the brown ball that Kyler Murray throws.